Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tom, I'm the Tech Chap, and today we're looking at a new sort of compact PC. Well, I say new, they've been around for a little while now, but only now, with the latest uh, processors and latest technology, have they become sort of a bit more mainstream, and I think also they represent pretty good value for money. So what is an Intel NUC, or NUC? Well, it's basically a 4-inch square, uh, very compact PC. Now, this is a what they describe as a bare-bones PC. So what does that mean? Well, basically you just need to add RAM, storage, and an operating system. So that's as simple as buying some RAM like uh, this one. Yep, this is RAM. This is 8 gigabytes of uh, HyperX Kingston RAM, and it has to be what they call DDR3L for low power. And also some storage in the form of an SSD. This is a uh, M2 SATA SSD, which is a Kingston 128 gigabyte. So that all sounds pretty complicated, like all these uh, low power and DDR3s and M2 SATAs. But essentially, it's, it's really not. And if you just simply go to Amazon, you'll see what other people buy with it. And I'll obviously link in my description to these sort of products. And you can then just put it together yourself. So basically, I'll uh, open this in a second and show you how it all works. But this is a PC with ports and uh, USB slots and everything you'd imagine on a desktop or on a laptop but in basically something the size of an Apple TV. It uh, only weighs about 417 grams, so it weighs less than an iPad Air 2, and only takes about 15 watts of power, so it's relatively cheap. The i3 version of this is uh, only about 200 pounds, the i5 is about 300 pounds, and uh, all you then have to do, as I say, is add some RAM and some storage, which will put you set you back roughly about another 100 pounds. So all in, I reckon you could get everything you wanted for about 300 or 320 for the i3 or maybe 400 or 420 for the i5. So we'll discuss a bit later the differences between the i3 and the i5, but for now let's open this up and see what we get inside. Excellent, so in the box we have the actual uh, Nook computer itself, we have the uh, little power brick it uses and the power cable, and a few screws to uh, put the uh, components in that we need to. And it also comes with a visa mount if you want to hide it behind your uh, PC monitor for example, or TV. To me this is about the size of a uh, Apple TV for example, and uh, if I grab a coaster, you can see that obviously it's thicker than a coaster, but it's uh, pretty much exactly the same size as one. So this is not really, this really is a uh, very compact and very small product, and that's really one of the selling points. Now this is the Intel Core i3 version of the Nook, and there is an i5 available. And basically what you get in this is the latest fifth generation i3 processor, or of course the i5 in the uh, slightly uh, higher end version. And that's about it. What we need to, and the motherboard of course. All you need to add is the storage, and the memory and the operating system. And that's fairly simple to do, I'll show you how to put all those in. But what one thing you will need is, of course, a monitor or a TV to then plug it into. This is, of course, just the PC, so you should treat this like a um, Mac Mini, for example. And so you'll have to plug it into uh, some peripherals, like a mouse, a keyboard, if you wish, or even an infrared remote. It does have an infrared sensor built in, along with Wi-Fi AC, four USB 3 ports, two on the back, two on the front. One on the front uh, actually has enough power to charge devices. Also on the front we have a headphone and mic port, and also on the back we have a Ethernet port for wide internet, a display port, mini display port 1.2, and a mini HDMI 1.4a. So if you're going to plug this into a monitor, for example, or a TV, you're most likely going to want to get a mini HDMI to normal HDMI cable, um, and this it supports up to 4K resolution at 30 hertz. The i5 on the other hand does support 4K up to 60 hertz. So if you want that full 4K 60 hertz on the i5 model, you're going to need to use a Display Port and have a Mini Display Port 1.2 to a Display Port 1.2 on your monitor, probably or TV. So uh, that's pretty much rounds up the ports and the spec and what you need to do then once you've put in the storage and the uh, RAM is download a operating system onto your a USB stick for example. In my case I'm going to use Windows 10 Technical Preview because it's free. If You, you can obviously use whichever one you'd like if you've got a copy of Windows 8 or um, Linux for example or even the latest Apple operating system you can of course install whatever you want on here. 
So as you can see, it comes with a variety of plug sockets, uh, caps if you will, so you can uh, use this anywhere in the world. And also a very cute, very small power brick, which uh, is pretty easy to hide. So let's keep the power to one side for now and have a look at the box. Now, if we open up the top here, actually, we th it's not actually the way you get in to, work to put the components in. But uh, if you get a few nails under here, uh, it's a little tricky. But hopefully I can crack this open. If not, this will be embarrassing. There we go. So once you take the top off, you can see that this isn't the way to get in, essentially. I believe the motherboard does have a USB 2 header here, which um, you can add in some extra functionality if you wish later on, uh, on top of that, on top of here. Or you can uh, change the top plate and personalize it with something you want. I believe they do sell uh, different uh, plates if you want to, although I'm not entirely sure why you'd want. But uh, if I put that back on for a moment, we'll try and get into the main body of it from the bottom. And that requires undoing about four screws. So I'll fast forward this as I unscrew these. And that's off. So uh, if you're going to be touching any of this, Nick, make sure you are grounded now because uh, you could always uh, short circuit things. But you can see that this is the, uh, the motherboard here and it's all very, very small and very compact. These two um, ports here are for the memory. You can have up to two what they call DIMMs or two um, pieces of memory essentially. And also here we have the Wi Fi AC uh, chip built in. And we have the uh, SATA port here, which in the taller models allows you to have put in sort of ex more storage in the form of a two and a half inch SSD, for example. And finally, in the bottom right corner, we have the slot for the storage to go in. So let me show you how that all clicks in and works. And you'll be amazed how simple this is. So let me open the uh, components up very quickly. So I've opened up the memory and the storage. As I say here, this is a eight gigabyte uh, single unit of DDR3L RAM and this has to be 1.35 volts and up to 1600 megahertz speed. I'm not sure, I don't believe anything higher than 1.35 volts is supported currently on these NUCs but that's fine, they're quite common and as I say for this 8 gigabyte stick of DDR3L it only cost me about 50 pounds so I think that's pretty good value. So it can go in either top or bottom one, this has got space for two uh, dims but it's simple as uh, sliding it in like so at a bit of an angle and then pushing down and wait for it to click in. Now the RAM is in, it's as simple as that. Now for the storage, I have to undo this screw here very quickly. So once you've taken the screw out, you can get your storage, and which in this case is a Kingston 128 gigabyte M2 SSD, which costs about 60 pounds. You can also get them in higher uh, capacities, like 256 gigabytes, for example. And it's as simple as, again, putting it in at a bit of an angle, and then slotting it down, like so. And then we'll just screw in the screw back on top to keep it in position. So that's it, we're nearly done. We've put the storage in, we put the RAM in, and so now we have a pretty capable i3 uh, processor. We have eight gigabytes of DDR3L RAM and 128 gigabyte SSD. So uh, not too bad at all for something the size of a, uh, a coaster. Now what we have to do is put the bottom back on and install our chosen operating system on it. But it's as simple as that, but of course this video won't be finished until I show you the finished product up and running. So that I'm going to hook it all up, install Windows 10, and next time you see me, we'll uh, be up and running. So let's see how that goes. So once you've installed Windows, I'd recommend pairing it with a Bluetooth keyboard and a Bluetooth mouse to cut down on the number of cables and wires. That way it looks more like an all-in-one PC, which is the sort of effect I was going for. As you can see, I do actually own the i3 and the i5 model, so I'm looking forward to reviewing both and comparing them against each other to see what the real world difference is between the i3 and the i5 and also the HD graphics 5500 versus 6000. So that'll be a little bit more in-depth, a little bit more technical. So uh, this has just been a how-to and a bit of a tutorial, but look forward to that upcoming review and comparison very soon.